Welcome back to The Grind for another exciting video on how I got Namaka, the Summer Kai season mythic, as a free-to-play player the season after getting Ronin. If you haven't seen my other mythic video, go check that out for more details, but I'm going to review my three main recommendations from that video quickly here before we get into the details of this season. First, you want to save up enough gold and bronze chests to allow you to complete the discount dragon completely. Uh, about 300 gold chests will get you about 6,000 sigils, plus the sigils from the events and the gold chests from the discount line. Next is to average about three to 4,000 per event, about the 400 to 500 sigil milestone, and three, to save up your rubies, about 150,000 for super sigil chests at the end to help you complete the third line. So I started this season with about 1,600 bronze chests and about 250 gold chests, as well as 7,000 rubies. The gold chest got me almost 5,000 sigils, and the bronze chests got me about 2,200 sigils. With the events included, I was and the gold chest from the line, I was able to complete Dreth, the discount dragon, within the first two weeks. As you can see in the PvP and fortification, those were my scores. If you would like to skip straight to the resource review, you can go to 250 and skip the event play-by-play. -play. The next event was Fight Pits, during which I completed my first mega attack ever. And with frequent energy resets, I managed to score up to the 500 Sigil Milestone. They then introduced multi-event weeks with the Assault event, and I managed to complete several lines, not all of them, but got the Garnet to two checkpoints with my Sapphire Dragons. This allowed me to get some extra Sigils and Chests during that week. Next was the Breeding event, where I also pushed to the 500 Sigil Milestone. I got a Nappa, a Poffet, and quartz to breedable as well as picked up a couple other dragons along the way during the temple raid i got to the 450 milestone and finished with 200 inner fires and 50 energy packs less than the start of the event following that was the fortification event with the lumber boost i got to the 500 sigil mark again and then in the gauntlet pvp event i got 450 sigil prize using 200 inner fire and 70 energy pack and got 30 of each back from the chests that i earned during that event also very proud of my team for placing second in this pvp event in the next breeding event, I managed to hit the 500 Sigil Prize again, breeding Renard, Joel, Iru, and Hasset. And then got the 425 Sigil Mark in Kingdom Wars using about 100 Inner Fire and 50 Energy Packs. And I'm even more proud of my team for placing first in this PvP event. Then in Ford, I stopped myself at the 450 Sigil Milestone, so I didn't overlevel my base compared to breeding. And following that was Fight Pits, where I got the 425 Sigil Prize by only using 35 Inner Fires and 100 Energy Packs with the frequent resets, and 20 of those inner fires was for a mega attack to help my team place up in the Colosseum. So that brought us to the last two weeks of the season where they released the Super Sigil chests, and I could not resist. I decided to spend about 95,000 rubies to finish the last two-thirds of Leilani so I could unlock Namaka and start leveling and practicing with her. So here's the exciting moment if you didn't see my unlocking Namaka video and I've been having fun with her so far. Now we'll talk about the resources I started and finished with this season and summarize how much it cost to get Namaka this season. So I started with 247 gold chests, 1610 bronze chests, and 70,000 rubies. By the time we got to the second last event of the season, I had accumulated 180,000 rubies. Once the super sigil chests were released in the last two weeks of the season, I spent 95,000 rubies to unlock Namaka. Now, if you factor in the amount of sigils I would have earned in the last two weeks of the season, that would be roughly about 6K with estimation. That would have saved me 25,000 rubies. So overall, it would have costed 70,000 rubies for Namaka alone. I let myself do it early because I knew I was going to need extra sigils because I wanted to unlock Firefin as well so that I could make some gameplay footage on that. And I'm going to get Firefin to Sapphire, which I should be able to do without spending any more rubies. Just with the last event, I'm about 2,500 sigils away. So in order to do that, I spent an extra 35,000 rubies on, on sigil chests to get Firefin to that point. But if you remove Firefin from the equation, and if I had waited until the end of the last event, then I would have only required 70,000 rubies to complete Namaka, and that means I spent about 70,000 rubies to get Firefin to Sapphire, which may not have been the best investment, but it did get me some more prizes and gold chests for the start of next season. So overall, I decreased by 20,000 rubies by the end of the season, but keep in mind that includes getting Firefin to Sapphire. 
If you remove Firefin from the equation, I would have finished the season with about 120,000 rubies while getting Namaka and finishing with 270 gold chests and 2417 bronze chests. Now, that doesn't include the last week of the event, which I'll grind out some more bronze chests. And keep in mind, this whole season was completely free to play. And because I know some of you will ask, um, the benefits or compensation I get from the creator's faction is not included in these numbers. However, from this point on, it would be very difficult to keep the compensation separate, and so I will not be able to claim free-to-play status anymore going into next season. But at least I was able to show how it is possible for a free-to-play player to get Mythics repeatedly season after season without missing one. Um, and even looking at just the Mythic, I finished with the Mythic and 50,000 extra rubies for the next season. So I hope this was helpful. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section, and I hope to see you in the next video.